basically what we have is, is you understand what the metric system is. It's a um, system of measurement uh, invented by the French uh, to be easier than all the other ways we had measurements. For years they had measurements, they'd use their feet. What? Uh, they'd use, they'd use a, a bunch of rocks, uh, they'd measure things with stones. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, all different types of things they would use to measure. And there wasn't as much of a consistency as there should be. So the scientific community, as scientific research began to expand, knew that they needed something to unify uh, experimental data so that when they look at someone else's experiment, they know exactly what it was they did, the, uh, they could follow the procedures and it could be repeatable. And that was very important. So back, I believe in the 60s, uh, all the scientists got together and they formed uh, what's called the metric system or better known as the uh, International System of Measurement, uh, SI system, right? And this was based on uh, some common uh, grounds for base units using uh, water, using other things uh, like one cubic centimeter of water is equal to one milliliter. Um, we have with degrees Celsius water, you have zero degrees freezing and uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius is boiling. So with the uh, metric system, we have these units. And we have base units. Uh, length is meters. Um, volume, we have liters. For um, mass, we have grams. And other units you're going to learn about are called derived units. Right? When you're driving a car, what do you use to measure how fast you're going? Miles per hour. Miles per hour, all right? You have distance and you have time. That's a derived unit, not a driving unit, a derived unit because you're taking two different base units, time and distance, and you're creating one unit, miles per hour. We do here, we'll do meters per second and kilometers per hour. Those are derived units. When we do acceleration, now you even change that over a time period. You have meters per second per second, all right? When we're talking about forces, Newton's forces, we're going to have uh, a certain amount of mass being applied with meters uh, per second squared, acceleration. So these are derived units. What we're going to talk about right now are just base units. We're not going to do so much derived units until we start with speed and velocity and acceleration um, week after next. We have M for mega. We have uh, a couple spaces in here. K for kilo. Uh, we have uh, H for hecto. Uh, D, A for deca. We have our base units of the liter, the gram, and the meter. And then we have uh, just a D for deci. We have a C for setting, a little m for, many. for milli. And then there was a, a, a mu for micro, I believe. All right? So mega means a million. Above that, you have a, a giga, which is a billion. Right? There's a space there. We're going to put a big line dividing these. And then uh, a billionth and a millionth, we have a mu for micro and a little n for nano. So I'll divide those. And what we're going to deal mostly with today, we're going to deal with these in the middle, uh, which which are common. All right, and you could you could do with the rest of it. A mu or an n? This right here. What's that? That's a mu. All right, you you know what an m is, right? Yeah. You just thought they looked like an m. If you put a u and you go like that to make it look like an m, it's not an m. It's not, it's a, not you. a you. What if you don't put the little tail? It's a mew. Did you get that up? Wait, did you read that up or is it official? It's official. It's official? You can read about it later. All right, so let's look at what we're going to do now is we're going to use what's called the factor label method. And although with, with the metric system it's in units, powers of 10, 
And it's easy to convert from one to the other because you can just move the decimal back and forth. When we're doing our equation solving in uh, physics with more complex numbers than just powers of 10, we're going to be using the factor label method to determine that our units are correct and that also that our, our numbers are being done correctly. Because these derived units, meters per second, when we set up our factor label, we should have as an answer the same thing we have in our problems. Distance divided by time, meters per second. So our answer is what units can be canceled out, what units have to stay as a derived unit will be the same using the factor label method. Uh, you see an example of the factor label method on the sheet that I gave you. And it gives you a couple examples. I'll look at the first example. The first example says that you have 55 millimeters or, and you wanted to convert it to meters. Now the steps. I'll do the steps right here. You have 55. Step number one is that you write down what it is that's given to you. So step number one, I'm going to complete it. 55 is the number, millimeters is the units. So step number one's done. You see that? You write down what's given to you. I wrote it on the board. 55 is the number in millimeters. I'm doing example number one. Okay. Example number one. Now, you, step number two has four steps. The first step, the first step that you're going to do is you start setting up this uh, factor label conversions. You take the units, what units, what units were given to us, Rich? Millimeters. Millimeters. And you place them in the denominator. So you can cancel out. Well, yes, so they cancel. It's the proper way to set it up. But where's the denominator? You're telling me on the bottom, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so millimeters on the bottom. So that's step two, part A. B says take what your desired units are going to be and place them in the numerator. What units, Rich, do you desire in this example problem? What are you looking for to convert to? Meters. Meters. So on the numerator, you put meters. So here we got meters. Now, on, on C, 2C, I want you to cross out where it says um, place It says place a 1 in front of the larger unit. I want you to take out larger unit. Oh, uh, I spent the whole thing. And place there, you took the larger unit, put any unit you want. Any, A-N-Y, write that down, for unit, number C? yeah, for two, C, any unit you want or desire. All right, so now look what we have here. I'm going to take a number one, and I'm going to place it right here, because that's what I feel like doing. <laughs> I feel like a three, though. No, no, no. <laughs> we didn't cross out the number one. We crossed out where we put the number one. Oh, so I put a number one. I could put it here. I could put it there. It's my choice. On top, in the numerator, or below in the denominator. It'll give you the same answer. Doesn't make a difference. But you have to pick one. And and too many people ask me. They say, Mr. Noon, which one's larger? I don't understand. It's larger. This is larger. Doesn't make a difference. So why even bother? I could put it in the numerator. I could put it in the denominator. They show us in the, in the numerator, and I'll show you how to solve this. It'll give you the same thing if you put it there. Now, the trick is you do this step by step. I have one meter. I have one meter. I take the number one and look on your chart. Everyone take their finger and put it on the word meter on the chart on the top in the middle box. You see that? Everyone's got their finger down on that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to put a number one right here. Yeah. I want to go to millimeters. Everyone has their finger. Mm -hmm. yes, With do. me, take your finger and go over each step until you get to millimeters. So watch. One, two, Trace. three. Now I fill this in with nothing. What do I got? Zero. What do I got? One thousand millimeters and one meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's got a ruler, everyone's got a meter stick. Here we go, right? 
A meter stick is one meter long. How many millimeters have been marked on your meter stick? About a thousand. A thousand. Yeah, about. About nine, nine, nine. Nine, nine, eight. Every time I do that, I lose a millimeter, right? Really? So don't do it. Are you serious? Yeah, look. <laughs> All right, 55, 55 times 1 divided by 1,000 equals what? Okay, it's on your paper, so all you got to do is read it. All you got to do is read it. This was an example problem. You could have used your calculator if you wanted to be more sophisticated, but the answer is already given to you. All right, Ray's going to do this step by step. Ray's going to do this step by step. We have the first step was to write down the number and the given unit. All right, so step number one is done, 35 milliliters. Now, set up, set up to, yep, yeah, clear the line all the way across. Put the, uh, put our given in the denominator and our wanted in the numerator. You got to spread it down, Ray, you got to move it down the end. There you go. And what do we want? We want DL. All right, where are you going to put the number one? Doesn't make a difference. Ray feels like putting it on top. Ray, put a one over the D on the chart on top. We're going to M. Put that number down in your ML. You do the math. 35 times 1 divided by 100. 0.35. There you go. 0 0.35 DL. That's our answer. Why don't we? Because this is what. We put the number one on. D. What did we put the number one on? D. This is what we want, the M. Where did we go? See, I put my finger on D. One, two. One, two. You see how that works? Yeah, you could. I understand that one. No, 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 no. You can put the one on the top, or you can put the one on the bottom. So let me do it this way. Is it the same? I'm going to leave the answer up there, and then you decide. Watch this. We got DL over ML. Now, Ray, someone wants to be different. Always, right? Jessica wants to be different. Watch this. I put a 1. I put a 1 right here. 1 ML. I put the 1 over the M. Here's a 1 right here. I go to D. Boom, boom. Zero, zero. Now, now, Ray doesn't know this. There's a proper way to write a decimal. Where do I put the decimal here? Divide by 100 should be 0 0.01. That's the proper way to write it. When you write decimals, there should always be a digit in front of the decimal. It shouldn't be left blank. It shouldn't be left blank. So if you put a decimal in here and you write it properly, then it'd be 0 0.01. Now, you were asking, that's my DL, 0 0.01. You have a calculator, 35 times 0. No, no, see, that's not working right there. See, it's point zero zero. Yeah, they don't work. It works. Yes. What number? Four. Number four. Just come on up here. Come on up here, and I'm going to do it step by step. Your question will be gone. It's not. Right. It's, it's the procedure. Come on, right in front. The procedure. If you follow the procedure, it lays itself out. You have nothing to question about. Step number one, write down what was given to you. Just go ahead and write it down. Step number one, right? This is number four, right? Question number four? Yeah. Step number one says write down what was given to you. The number and the units. The word was? One thousand liters. All right, now she sets an under underscore line across like this. Now in the denominator, Put what was given to you as a unit. What's given to you? It's on the board. A liter. What are you looking for? Put in the numerator. Kiloliters. All right. Let me put this right here. Uh, D A H K. All right. Now, put the number one in front of kiloliters. Put a number one on top of the K, and now go over at a zero every time you go over. One, two, 
three. Now put that down where it says liter on the bottom. 1,000 liters in one kiloliter. There's 1,000 liters in one kiloliter. 1,000 times one is 1,000. 1,000 divided by 1,000 is? One. That's your answer. Awesome. This is the easy way. K, H, D, A, gram, liter, meter, D, C, M. All right. <laughs> all we have to do, all we have to do is, is little, jump our little finger and pretend it's a decimal. Okay. So, the first thing we have here on page, on the second page, we have a 1,000 mg to G. All right. 1,000 m g and we want to go to g what do we do go to the end. one two, two three where does the decimal go right here no oh, okay one two three so we went over this way three times arrow 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 Divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. 1,000 divided by 10? 100. 100 divided by 10? 10. 10 divided by 10? 1. Divide by 10, divide by 10. Or you just move the decimal. You just do this with a decimal. Move it three times. So each one of these bumps, this one is divide by 10. When it goes this way, this is times 10. If you move from this side to that side, times 10, times 10, times 10. Or... You pretend it's the decimal, and you bump this way, or you bump it that way. Is there anyone that never learned how to do it that way? You didn't learn how to do it? All right. So let's look at, um, let's look at the next one we got here. Uh, 10, 109G to kilo G. Right? Is that 109? 109 grams. And we're going to kilograms. So what do I do here? Here's the gram. Here's the kilogram. I'm going this way. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. One, two, three bumps. 109. Decimal. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. 0 0.109. Awesome. Kgs. One, two, three bumps. First thing you do is decide where the decimal is supposed to be, even though if you don't see a decimal there. The decimal always goes in a predictable place. All right, let's look at uh, one liter to milliliter. All right, here's a nice one. One liter. One liter. I want to go to milliliter. Liter's in the middle. So how do I write this? One point, right, the decimal goes after the one. I go one, two, three. Times ten, times ten, times ten. What goes in here? Zero, zero, zero. What's our number? One thousand. One times ten is ten. Ten times ten is a hundred. A hundred times ten is a thousand. The answer is a thousand. See how it works? Mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. You see that? Sophia. <laughs> Sophia. Sophia.